because I'm from a little town and there was this like center where they had a beautiful church in the middle of nowhere and it was open 24 seven. So I used to go there at night to play and there was like a great acoustic there and a really nice piano. So I usually sat there and I started improvising uh, just be like before I started practicing, I started to improvise and, and from there I started to compose. Robert. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good Yes, so um so wonderful to talk to you and thank you for your time. Yeah, my pleasure. Uh, you are a pianist, you're a, a cellist and a composer. That's right. You're a busy man. <laughs> I try to be at least. <laughs> but first tell me where are you based? Now, just since like three weeks ago, I'm based in Vienna. Oh, you're here. Oh, I see. Okay. So permanently now? Well, at least for a year. I'm doing a, like a postgraduate in the MOOC in composing. Yeah. 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 So, But before that, I used to live in Barcelona in Spain. Oh, I see. Hmm. But, um, and, and are you originally from Bar Barcelona? No, I'm from Norway. From Norway. Oh, I see. Okay, so you grew up there and started in music there. Yes, that's right. Okay. So how how did it start for you? Well, I started playing the piano when I was eight. Yeah. My my sister played, and I was inspired, and then I wanted to try. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and from there it's just been pretty much nonstop. <laughs> and how? Uh, and the composing because your music is beautiful. I saw Thank you very Instagram. much. Yes, I love mm. it. Where did this composing start for you? I, actually, I started when I was a kid, um, yeah. very yeah. early, because I used to I used to to rehearse in a church in a, in the middle of the forest in Norway, because I'm from a little town and there was this like center where they had a beautiful church in the middle of Norway and it was open twenty four seven, so I used to go there at night to play. And there was like a great acoustic there and a really nice piano. So I usually sat there and I started improvising. Uh, just be like before I started practicing, I started to improvise. And, and from there, I started to compose. And I, I've been doing it well since I was very young, but I only did it for me, for my own sake. And I didn't really think that I was going to try to pursue a career in composing or anything. But I, it, it was always something I did from time to time. Suddenly, I've composed a piece like without even knowing how it happened. Um, and then, like, people started to listen to it, and they, they really liked it. And it's like, okay, maybe I should compose more. And I, But it was something I, like, very, very sporadically happens, you know? Mm -hmm. So, But then last, last maybe three or four years, I've been really getting into it, and I've released some albums now with my music, and... Uh, and I, yeah, it's been more productive. Yeah, it's beautiful. It really um, it caught, well, it caught my ear. Uh, that, yeah. And your your videos are so beautiful as well. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's important nowadays because people like music is listened to also with the eyes nowadays, you know, yeah. on the computer, on the phone, there's screens everywhere. Exactly. So and I, I think, think it's, it's And I think it's part of the storytelling. And we yeah. are, yeah. But what I find now very interesting is that you say you lived in a in a small town in Norway, mm -hmm. and and still you had this opportunity, these opportunities. And was it? Do you come from a musical family, or what was? Who was the the person who inspired you? Well, uh, most of my family are like has some musical gifts, but yeah. nobody has pursued a musical career. Mm -hmm. uh, they're like very random professions. Uh, everybody You're from a big family, but and I'm the youngest. Uh, but yeah, music was like a big deal just, in our house. Um, yeah, we all sang mm -hmm. in the choir. Everybody likes some plays and some instruments. My father played the accordion. Mm -hmm. My brothers the guitar, and yeah, so it was always so, mm, it was yeah. just there. And then from um, piano and and cello, you also play. I, yeah, I started to play the cello when I was like around 16, 17 years old. Okay. Now, yeah. these these instruments, do they help you or, or the, the sound of these instruments, do, does it uh, help you to um, compose or uh, is there influence from the both of them that 
makes you compose in this specific way? Um, well, def I definitely use both instruments when I compose. Oh. Mm. I usually like I record everything, like maybe first on the piano, and then if it's going to be a bigger piece with more instruments, I would try to play the cello on top and record the voices for whatever instrument it would be. I would like play the cello to make the other parts. So I use both instruments as like tools. Okay. And now in this time, the lockdown time, did you compose uh, something specific? Well, uh, you know, you, you think you're going into lockdown, you don't know how long it's going to last. And you think, oh, it's going to yeah. be so great to have time to focus and stuff. But then I was not inspired at all. Really? During the lockdown. In, okay. Spain, the lo in, lo in Spain, the lockdown was really harsh. Like, we, you were mm -hmm. not allowed to leave the house. Uh, so, but I didn't compose anything. Just really? like mm -hmm. when the lockdown all, was almost over, I did compose one piece. So mm -hmm. I called it Confinados, which means confined in Spanish. But that was the only piece. So I mean, because <laughs> it's hard, you, know, you have no sti stimulus. So um, I don't know. I was not inspired to compose. I tried. It was like nothing came. Yeah. And, yeah, it's really uh, that's very interesting that you say that because I also uh, spoke to choreographers mm -hmm. and um, during the lockdown time. And I was asking, did. Uh, because and, and I also spoke to two um, uh, composers that I photographed here in Vienna during yeah. lockdown, and some said that they were very inspired because it mm -hmm. was a quiet time and there was nothing. And then others would say to me, "I need the the you know the the yeah. energy and the from outside and the busy and and the stimulus and so on." So you are one of those people. Yeah. Apparently, I didn't know, but yeah, oh, that was okay. came yeah. quite good. Yeah, oh, that's very interesting. So now, what is your um, uh, wish now for for your music? Well, I hope uh, I want to get my music like out there to, for people yeah. to listen to it. So yeah. hopefully, being also here in Vienna will help because it's such a musical city. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, I want to. Like now that I'm in the university doing this postgraduate, so I want to like further develop my my language and music, my skills, and try to also learn to write for bigger ensembles. Because up until now, it's mostly for piano and like small chamber music groups. Uh, and I also really like uh, writing for theater. Oh, okay. uh, yes, so like musical theater. It's a different, a completely different stuff. But I really like that as well. Yeah. So hopefully, I'll, uh, I I've already done some work. I've done like three musicals back in mm -hmm. Spain. Uh, and hopefully I'll be able to, to do more of that as well, because I, I really enjoy working with that. I uh, I saw on your on your Instagram that you um, write the musicals, and I was going to ask you about that. Yeah. So what is it about the musicals that you like? Because I don't know. It's quite it's... different than, than opera, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know. It's just the, like also the, the magic on, of the stage and of a live performance. Yeah. Like having like lights, having props, having uh, makeup on. And like I love being part of that as well. Mm. Yeah, I think it's quite magical. And the the ones that you wrote now that you did in in Spain yeah. are they in Spanish then? The Catalan actually, they're in Catalan. Pardon? They're in Catalan because it was oh. in Barcelona. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm. Um, so uh, and now with your postgraduate, you say you are you want to to um, to explore more and, and and bigger works. Yeah. So what what would be the wish for you then? Uh, well, what the wish would be like to maybe have like an orchestral piece performed. Yeah, uh, that would be like wow, well, uh, a goal. Yeah. Um. So I'm gonna try to do that during this year. Uh, and also, to, I also like enjoying like being the performer as well myself, like performer composer. Ah. Mm. So I will also like I would like my dream would be to make like a suite for like piano and like chamber orchestra or something that that could be like one of mm. my goals as well. And and you want to be part of that? You want to play as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Oh, that's that's yeah. amazing. Um, and because I see also on your videos that you you're playing. Yeah. 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 Mm. yeah, that's great. That's uh, that's uh, also 
Um, I think it's uh, when you compose and you play, it's also you you probably um, play it the way you feel it, the way you exactly. want it, or the, that it's intended to be. Yeah, so in the end, like the music I write is like a prolongation of my my feelings or my you know my yeah. inner self. <laughs> so so who better to perform it than, than me myself? And also because we from the classical background, it's not that common to like write your own pieces and perform them. But jazz musicians do it all the time. That that's what they do. Like they make their own like tunes or whatever. Uh, and there's no reason why we shouldn't do the same. Like. And then in back in the days, all the composers were performers. Uh, yeah. So yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I spoke to a pianist yesterday and she's we spoke about this specific thing from uh, you know, wouldn't it have it been nice to be able to ask Beethoven what he felt or how he wanted to, to, yeah. it to be. And and she said that she loves working with uh, living composers because then she can talk to them and ask and and find out. But um, and and the one thing that we talked about is that there's not sometimes not recordings of the works if it's a if it's a new work there's yeah. not recordings so how do you hear how it should sound but now when you say you're playing it then yeah. of course there's no better example of how it's intended to be exactly yeah, yeah. that's great. I like mm -hmm. that very much. Yeah. So where can uh, where can we find your music? Are you on so Spotify? So I upload it like on Spotify. I have two two albums. Yeah. Of my 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 piano and chamber music works, uh, mm -hmm. and then I I use my Instagram account to like mm -hmm. publish maybe some ideas or yeah, and also I have this YouTube channel. Yeah. Now tell me, you're now in Vienna for three weeks. Yeah. So what? What what have you uh, discovered? Well, you like? <laughs> I've been here many times before, uh, yeah. um, and I played here a lot with this. I have this other project with a cellist to play folk music, and I play the cello. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, but it's I I really like it here. It's so beautiful. Uh, yeah. And it's not that big. I discovered because <laughs> I thought Vienna was huge, but like oh, it's actually quite yeah. small. Yeah. Uh, and the fact that the, that music is such a big part of the culture here yeah. it's really inspiring like re people mm -hmm. really like also like respect the musician as a, as a profession you know they're like ah mule musica <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. Like, it's so high in, in like people's like mind exactly. which i find very, very unique for like if you compare to spain it's very different like there the musicians don't have the status at all Mm. Um, so that's yeah. very that's very nice about being here. I I did speak in my in my uh, series moments in lockdown. I spoke to some artists in in Spain, and it was the yeah. same thing. You know that that they were saying that artists are not very valued there, and and not. yeah. So, but but here it's different in Vienna. Well, very I. Much. I wish I wish for you the best for your studies here and for Thank your music. You. And I would love to you to let me know when you do your um, when you do a concert or something that I come and listen. That would be so wonderful. And sure. uh, I will let you know. Yeah, and uh, and I wish that you have a lovely stay for the time that you are here. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> So have a lovely day and it was so lovely to talk to you. Thank you, you too. Okay. okay. Bye. Bye, Hubbard. <laughs>